Awesome. Well, first of all, hey guys, thanks for taking the time. Howdy. I love it. You're just a random voice. <laughs> I, know, I, I actually had the, the office space cubicle from office space in my background, but it doesn't work with this software. So I'm just a disembodied <laughs> voice now. <laughs> awesome. So I love to start my interviews at the beginning. Tell me what it was about this particular project or these particular characters that, that hooked you. And you guys said, yeah, this is worth our time to do this. Go, Lily. No, you go first. It's not 4.30 in the morning where you are. Yeah, it's, it's 4.30 oh, okay. in the morning right now where we are. Well, I, I, I guess it's it, these stories of survival and uh, resilience, they, they certainly attract me. I'm, uh, I don't like jobs where I have to cry. So um, uh, nobody cries in the 1690s. Men don't cry. Well, <laughs> Thomas is... Oh. You also, I, cry. Cry I cry a little bit and also um you got to be very um you got to be very tough and and hit people which i know you really like yeah. you had that dick you carried around you were yeah. able to uh, i'm a racist i'm i'm a racist so uh so uh i wouldn't say it's the racism i'm attracted to it's the it's, it's the uh it's the numb soul <laughs> That's my he's, turn. Uh, he's, uh, I, I'm actually, I'm actually kind of the same. I actually, because I'm, I'm also, you know, uh, playing a rather, uh, rather unpleasant individual. And I think the subtext of what uh, Mr. Wilmot is saying is that it's great when you get to play uh, characters that are pushed out to um, more extreme places. You're not, you're not sitting there. You're not sitting there trying to. Uh, you're not, you're not uh, held by, you know normal behavior in this totally. world. Totally, totally. And, and also, yeah. Extreme place. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And also I think, I mean, it's the closest thing to fantasy when you're in like something that's, you know, set in another time where you get to entertain a civilization or society that's so far removed from you and you either see how far or not so far we've come. And I loved, it's, you know, exploring man's relationship to nature and, you know, even in this current time, in the current climate, it's kind of, I loved how it sort of ran parallel still, it feels relevant, not just. Practically, practically for us too, we, we, you know, Lily and I come from a place where we, our seasons are so much less extreme than the Northern Hemisphere and, and totally. what, what this story is dealing with. So even just to be in that place and shooting in that environment with what was constructed um, for the, for the, for the production, that was, that was really extraordinary and to witness that kind of change of seasons as it was happening. That's something that Elwood had mentioned to me when I talked to him last week is you guys were really out there shooting in nature. So just how crazy yeah. was that experience? And, and did that help you guys as far as getting into character? It did about 80% of the job for us. It was great. Even if you're a rubbish actor, it kind of, it served you a lot. It very, very much informed. Our, I think yeah, you don't have to pretend much when you're, when you're in the real place, really, you know, and to walk in and see that town that, you know, yeah. uh, that, 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 that Isabella had constructed and, um, and that, you know, the, the, the network and the producers and everybody had committed to a degree mm. of realism that I have never come across before. I've shot on some pretty sizable sets, but I've never been in a real yeah. village where if you're, if you're in mm. a location, you know, in that, in that hotel, for example, that Marsha has, you know, the, the pub, um, that you, the inn. You, you can go in, you can, you, you can walk upstairs, you can walk in other rooms, you can light the fireplace. It's an extraordinary, um, yeah, commitment to. I know. To I, I remember you, Thomas, being like, Lily, like, have you seen my office? Like, I'm like, what do you mean your office? Like, he's like, it's legitimate. Like, come to my office, come to my house. Let me show you my house where I cook food. <laughs> like, I think, show and I tell. Think, you know, I think we were all proved just how soft and semi-committed we were by not just living there and we should have just moved in i tried to get you out there david and you called me daniel day lewis <laughs> you called me <laughs> um and also the kind of scale of the nature makes your imagination you can realize that uh, how vulnerable the community yeah. was just completely surrounded by by an ocean of forest See, I'm born and raised in Southern California. I would have been spoiled. You throw me out there, I'd be like, I'm lost. Goodbye. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Try doing it in a corset as well. Just 
<laughs> so, yeah, I don't know how much I don't know how much nerd culture was kind of blossoming in you know in that period of time. <laughs> I've had much time. You were close at the end with the tiger claw. Oh yeah, I had a tiger claw. That's we're kind of nerdy. So I don't want to give too much away, but I do want to make sure I draw attention to the stuff that you guys really love. Did you have particular aspects or particular moments that you guys were like, this is super cool and we can't wait until the audience gets to see it? Uh, I think I was a kind of, stuff. Go ahead. Go on, go ahead. Well, I, I was kind of like that about Wobbick. Every time I was in Wobbick, I kind of felt that. I just kind of felt this is amazing, you know. To be honest, I know it sounds like it sounds uh, a bit um, standard, but uh, but it's actually a profoundly great group of people, and that was that was kind of the main thing, really. Actually, it was just a it was a terrific a terrific group to get up and work with every day, and some profoundly talented people, and and actually extremely, you know, like you were all professionals and you're working in a professional environment. And everybody actually came at their jobs um, and their approach to their work very differently. And um, and it was just a fascinating thing to be around and engage with, uh, almost to an individual. The characters are very archetypal, and the and the people the people are too in some ways, you know. Um, so it was um, it was really interesting. Totally. I think for me, the highlight was I, it's a it's the level of immersion, obviously, and just what we were sort of saying before. But like, you know, you're shooting, there's no green screen. You are in the wilderness. You're where these ancestors walked. The oceans of trees are still around you in that in that area. That's how far out we are, even from the city. And I think even just doing night shoots and the delirium of night shoots in costume in the woods. I remember that night we were in that and it was like pissing down with rain outside. And we were all just, all the actors were locked in this little cabin oh, and yeah, everyone else yeah. was running around mad going like, ah, the production. Anyway, and I think it was just like that really intense delirium and sick moment of like, this is our jobs. And oh, we oh, are, it's spooky. It was, it was haunting. Also it's extraordinary just to be in that part of the world too, I think. And um, and Quebec is is a really extraordinary place and a really different, um, really different type of culture than anything mm. that um, we're used to as well yeah totally yeah. well they want me to wind this down so i just want to quickly ask you guys is there anything i'm not thinking of that you guys want to throw in here anything else that's important to you that you want to mention uh, the fee de wa i don't know i thought we'd talk about the fee de wa hillary clinton um, was a fee de wa and like her oh. ancestors yeah she wasn't too yeah. Um, I don't know that maybe the show it's yes it's obviously about a very specific time but it definitely feels like a western through the lens of colonization and everything that's threaded through it feels relevant today and even in these uncharted times that we're in now when you know you don't really know what's going on even with you know isolation and COVID it's just I think it's something that people really can enjoy to tap out but also still reflect. Well said. Also also just one last thing which was a, it's a it's kind of a, a fascinating thing to be able to engage with Annie Prue's work and her perspective to having that as the basis for the, for the whole thing. Well thanks for letting me pick your brains for a couple of minutes guys it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks so much. So nice talking. All right. Take care, guys.